rooms at feasts. So just like the red carpet events with Hollywood and all in the president celebrity rooms and all that stuff even to this day, you always see this, uh, those big nose wretched people that can stole all the wealth of the planet. And you're not going to try to make me be a racist or nothing. I'm not talking about these poor people walking around and call themselves Jews, go to these little churches and get victimized just as much by the Zionists as my ass, all right? So don't even try to go there and say that I'm trying to... There is no nationalism of people called Jews on this earth. Jews is a religious cult of people. That's what they are. So I'm not saying anything negative about a nationalism. I'm talking about a criminal group of people. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Beware of the scribes, which is already walking long robes and love greetings in the markets, in the highest seats, in the synagogues, in the chief rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses for the show make long prayers and for the same shall receive greater damnation. For the show they fake the Christmas shit. That's what they mean by that. Make long prayer. Okay? This is the chapter signs of the end. It said, And he looked up and saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting the tither to mites. And he said of a truth, I say unto you that this poor widow has cast and more than they are for all these have of their abundance cast out, cast in unto the offerings of God. But she of her pen, pen, penury hath cast in all the living that she had. I mean, the lady that gave the few gave the biggest because she, even though she didn't have much, she gave everything that she had. So that means if she only had five pennies and she gave the whole five pennies, the man that had a million dollars, if he would have gave two hundred and fifty thousand dollars he still had seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars left which means that he was not as big a giver as the lady who gave all of her five pennies do you understand okay and as some spake of the temple how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts he said as for these things which ye behold the days will come in then which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what signs will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye not be deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. See what he said, the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons. See, listen where they're going to take you. Persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and unto prison, these Jews, locking everybody up in the damn jails, taking everybody to that damn Vatican. Okay, the little children, having their little rituals of prayers around these little black children. Okay, all the torturing that they've been doing and all these church and raping these little boys and everything. Okay, here goes Yeshua preaching these prophecies that everybody think is stuff that done already happened. They took these things off the temple wall and wrote this book. And the Jews told you that this stuff has already came apart. What they don't know is that they were writing prophecies of things that's coming in our days. Things that we're living right now. Okay, the pits of hell is open. We got the earthquake. We got the UFOs flying around. They didn't talk to you about Ezekiel sin the wheel. All this stuff going on. And because you guys want Jesus to be white. And wanted to be Jesus. And we ain't never ever on this earth had no Jesus problem with no white people coming around and thinking they're going to whitewash every damn thing. And then that's just going to be finalized. And this is why everything is messed up. Because you guys threw that bullshit in here. And the only thing it did is messed everything up. And now we're down to the nitty gritty 
about dealing with that and fixing all that and you guys want to sit around and try to overlook the judgment that's in your face and go right ahead and you got every right to do that but like I said to you son instructed me to tell you all these things I don't care if my account on YouTube is down nobody want to act like they give a fuck I don't care all I got to do is tell you okay but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prison, thus these Jews with their prisons and their damn churches, and being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Now listen, all the Jesus stuff is a lie. You do not see no one being persecuted for being a Christian by any man. There is no system of people on the earth persecuting no Christians. Who's persecuting the Christians? The elemental forces that has been victimized by Christians. And watched all their children get murdered. Watch all the trees get cut down. Watch all the prisons get built. So the elemental forces is out to destroy all the people who implemented all that Jesus garbage and think they're going to keep perpetuating that. So this book can be very misleading when they sit there and tell you that people are going to be persecuted for trying to follow Jesus' name. When we know for a fact that People got persecuted and deprived for not wanting to have anything to do with all that foolishness, okay? Okay, he said, And then he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be, and diverse places, and famine, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues, and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for thy name's sake, and it shall turn and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your heart not to meditate before what ye shall answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist, and you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren. Now see, this is the stuff that I'm telling you guys I have to go through. Okay, this is what I'm saying because everybody on this earth want to be stuck on that Christian stuff. And we all can see that the world just got really destroyed. But so many bottomless amount of people being involved with that phony, ask Jesus for forgiveness. Go ahead, do whatever you want to do. Just believe Jesus after your sins and you come and ask for forgiveness. And people come in every weekend and ask for forgiveness because they come ask for forgiveness on Sunday, raise hell all week. So this is why our world is so full of hypocrisy. Because we get a hypocritical teaching from this book that doesn't teach you to strive to be 100. It teach you to come to church and get 100 and ask Jesus to forgive you. All right? Bullshit. That's all it is. Okay. For I will give you a marvel wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, nor resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and for your family. You don't want to have nothing to do with you when they see you getting wise like this. And the Bible and, and the universe is wanting you to come out and not only speak purity to everyone else, you got to demonstrate purity yourself, which is hard. It's really hard. But the fact that you had the audacity to want to strive to be that can irritate a lot of people. They don't understand who you think you are. They think that you could be somebody that actually poured that type of essential purity and be the light. And even if you fail at, at doing that, you got to be commemorated for trying. you got to be awarded for just trying. And especially if you go out there and do it with what's inside of you instead of running it, get it from Jesus. That makes you that much more powerful. Feel me? So now watch this. And ye shall be betrayed by both parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends. And same of ye shall they cause. And shame and, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And 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 I shall be hated of all men. And ye and ye and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an hour of your head perish but there shall not a hair of your head perish in your patience possess ye your soul and the destruction of Jerusalem and when you shall see 
But the thing about it is no one is being victimized for being on the Jesus team. Everybody on the Jesus team does not get victimized for being a Christian. You might go through the struggles of life and get victimized just because those are the circumstances of our life. But no one has been getting beat up or harassed for being a Jesus lover. Those are all just lies in this book that they tell you about went on at one time bunch of lies about where Christianity came from. Everything is all distorted and whitewashed. So what I'm getting at is this. You tell me the Christian that you know that somebody beat up for being a Christian. It don't exist. We all know that. The only reason why Christians and Muslims have fights with each other is because the government staged that stuff. They always stage in freaking animosity and adversity and dissension. That's what gives them a necessity this is why you need us. Because Christians and Muslims need someone to sort their problems off for them. That we cause for them. See? Stupid stuff. The destruction of Jerusalem. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the, when was Jerusalem not compassed with armies? The minute that the white people moved into Jerusalem, it has always had armies ever since. So it's been thousands of years now that there's been armies in Jerusalem. So this cannot be no Bible and time prophecy because the earth should have, life should have ended a long time ago. When the Palestinians entered into Israel, what is today Israel, they brought weapons in there with them and weapons have been there since because the weapons they brought in there with them to take over the land from the Canaanites. Is the weapons that the Palestinians as well as Israelites, which is the same group of people, except the Palestinians have more black in them than the Jews who was part of the white people that came in and mixed with the black people that was there and created those Palestinian Arabs. Any way you look at it. And come ye shall see Jerusalem comes with armies, then know that the desolation therefore is nigh. Then that them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, and all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon his people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captives, and to all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So, what they're saying is that the Gentiles is in Jerusalem today, the white people, a day will come that they see it's a bunch of lies because they want you to believe that when Jerusalem was overran according to the Bible that it was Gentiles living in there. And they were all taken away into exile. But the truth of the matter is that that story is synonymous with the Moroccan people who left Morocco and came into Egypt and developed the tribe of Judah. And they was also from Ethiopia. And the whole mass of people came into Egypt from all over Africa because we all known ourselves to be one family. These people came in and started this tribe and they learned knowledges from the Egyptians plus knowledges from the Egyptian plus knowledges from the Egyptian people that had all been tweaked and tarnished a little bit different because of movements of people and the different consciousness that people were receiving from their light sigils coming from stars and planets and suns. So they all came together and merged all of their unique findings with each other, created that sector of people known as the tribe of Judah. They went up into the land that became the people known as the Hebrews, Canaanite people, they were from Ethiopia. You can trace those people roots back to Ethiopia. They were the Asar people 